Hey guys, Will here from Start Training, here to talk a little bit about weight loss today. Now I'm sure we've all thought about weight loss or heard, know someone that's gone through, through a weight loss transformation. Um, when we talk weight loss, key, key thing to remember is it's not actually just weight loss. We're trying to change the body composition a little bit. So we're not just looking to lose weight, we're looking to put on a bit of muscle, and, and what we're really trying to do is lose fat. Okay? So we're not just looking to decrease the number on the scales, we're looking to actually change you know, how the body's made up. We want a bit more, bit more muscle within the body. One, it's gonna help us move better, feel better, um, but also it's gonna help us just burn that little bit of extra energy. Now, I'm sure we've all heard the, the daily recommendations from the government or the WHO, so the World Health Organization, um, where we're looking at um, exercising at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise. So you're looking for you know, 30 minutes a day on, on most days of the week. Uh, moderate intensity, we talk you know, increased breathing rate, a little bit of an increased heart rate. We're not looking at um, mass amounts of being unable to breathe and being exhausted in, in two minutes of work. So that being said, there is always all this so much information out there that, that just describes you know the best exercise or the best way to lose weight or the best diet or whatever it is so you ask dr google how do i lose weight and all this information is thrown at you doesn't always make it particularly easy and helpful when deciding you know i'm going to start my weight loss journey what do i do that much information out there so today we're just going to try and simplify some of that up for you and, and discuss you know some of the easy ways to sort of and where you can always start when trying to lose weight now, again, I've mentioned weight loss and fat, uh, and fat loss. Um, I'll probably use a little bit intercha interchangeably today. Um, when we talk about it is we wanna make sure it's sustainable as well. So that's our big key point when we're looking uh, in regards to, to, our, um, to our plans and our journeys and all that. It's gotta, it's gotta be sustainable. We don't wanna lose you know, 10 kilos of weight and before you know it, you've put it back on. All right, so we wanna make sure what we do, it's a bit of a lifestyle intervention change so that it's, it's becoming it's becoming a, a sustainable long-term um, habit um, and you get all of the, the longer-term um, health benefits from it as well. Now, what we need to do is we need to find a starting point for you. So everyone is different um, and uh, there are many different factors that then inc are incorporated into finding you know, your starting point and, and where you should aim to be and where you should be aiming to sort of exercise. Um, so one of the big things is your history. So whether it be you've, you've played sport in the past, whether it's been you've, you've, you've been working at a desk for 20, 30 years, um, you've never played sport in your life and you just want to lose that little bit of weight. Um, so all that, that all comes into our consideration in regards to where should we start you. So when we talk history, we also want to bring in to the fact of you know, whether you've had injuries, whether your, you know, your work history, so where you're at currently with work um, and personal life and all that sort of stuff so that the time restraints you might be under. One other little thing that it should be sort of clarified a bit when we talk about goals. So a lot of people say, I wanna lose weight. Um, what we wanna do is make sure that we've got the right goals set for you. So we need to sort of clear up a little bit in regards to not just using a generic weight or lose weight, but be a bit more specific. So you know, whether you'd like to tone up a little bit. You've lost a bit of weight and you're just wanting to make sure that the skin doesn't come too, too loose or, or stretched. Um, looking to, you know, you want to drop a dress size or, you, or there's little subtle changes that, that do, do affect how we actually structure a program and what we're actually doing. Now, there can be many psychological factors that can affect someone um, on their weight loss journey, um, even going way back to even wanting to start um, losing weight. Now, one of, the, one of the big ones is that there's an in, the influx of information which I've mentioned earlier. Now, it can be quite confronting um, and can really deter people. Um, one of the other psychological factors um, is pain. Now, whether this be pain from joints um, prior to even starting um, any exercise or weight loss, um, or whether this be pain you know, after an exercise session, um, or whether you, you, your joints or muscles or, or anywhere in your body starts to get sore during your weight loss journey um, can be a really big deterrent, um, which is an obvious thing and which is a normal thing as well. Um, but we've just got to make sure that we, we know what pain 
um, actually is when, in, in regards to exercise. Um, not all pain obviously means injury. Um, pain through our joints when we exercise uh, is the, as you lose weight, you'll actually, the pressure through the joints um, decreases as well. So the pain may actually alleviate more the more you exercise. Um, and that might mean just adjusting how you're exercising or what you're doing. So it could be the case of instead of going for walks or runs, you might end up in the pool to start with or on a bike because there's less load through the joints. Um, until you've lost a bit of weight, you've got a bit more strength around the muscles, uh, with the muscles around the joints um, and, and pushing forward from there. And then you can get back to your walking or progressing into running or, and, and things like that. Um, the, other, the other big sort of pain that people can feel um, in regards to exercise, and this is particularly post an exercise session, is what we call DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So what DOMS is, is pretty much just muscles being sore post exercise. Okay, um, that's from, from leaving enzymes and stuff through the body after we've exercised. Um, so also known um, as lactic acid, um, as, as a lot of you guys probably know. Um, all that's doing is, is causing the, the muscles just that little bit of fatigue feel and pain feel post exercise. Um, what really helps that is one, obviously um, cooling down and recovering well, but it's actually getting out there and doing more. So if you've done a really big session one day, maybe the next day you do a bit of a lighter session, just get the blood pumping through the muscles and it will help sort of clear out some of that, that, that DOMS feel as, as we phrased it. Now, one of the other psychological factors that we, we come across a bit is, is people feeling like they're not doing enough. Or, or feeling like they the, um, no, they don't fit in. So, like in a gym setting. So, bigger if you're a bigger person and you go into a gym, you can often feel out of place. Um, that's often often not the case. Um, you'll actually get quite a bit of encouragement in those sorts of settings as well. Um, but we don't need to make you go to a gym. There's plenty of other uh, modes and types of exercise that we can do. Um, so. Like I said, it's, it's working around these little inhibitory uh, mechanisms within our own brain um, to, to allow us still to, to, to exercise and, and lose weight. Now, the, the idea of not doing enough um, can be a very big deterrent. So what we want to do is make sure that we take the word just um, out of, out of um, when we're talking about exercise. So it's not I'm just walking, um, it's you're walking, you're doing more than what you were or I'm, I'm just doing this twice a week. It's, you're doing this twice a week, it's more than what you're doing prior to, to having started it. So, so what we've got to remember is something is better than nothing. Okay, so if you're, if you're walking two times a week, great. We need to build on that. It might not be as much as what the daily recommendations are or what you know um, you're meant to be doing per, um, per se, but it's we build from there, all right? It's easier to have building blocks to start with than to try and start from scratch. And one of the other last sort of big psychological factors or hurdles that can get in the way is, is our goals, all right? Um, so we've probably all got the big goal in regards to weight loss is we wanna lose 10, 20, 30 kilos, whatever it may be, be for you. Um, is that it's a great big end goal um, and you don't see much reward as you go unless you're monitoring closely um, along, along the way. So what we want to do is then break that big goal up into small little goals and, and how can we make it more achievable. Um, so what we like to use is what we call SMART goals. All right, it's a bit of an acronym. So S stands for specific. Okay, so we want a specific goal. All right, so losing 10 kilos is great, but let's break it down further. Let's look at the thing, let's look at everything you need to, to do um, to help get to that end goal. So it might be dietary wise or it might be exercise based. So specific, so you're gonna make sure that you're gonna exercise, okay? What we want to then do is make sure it's measurable, which is what the M stands for, okay? So it might be, I'm gonna exercise five times, okay? So I need to exercise five times this week. All right, you can measure how many times you've done it. All right, it could be, you know, you gotta make sure you meal prep. You've gotta make sure you eat, eat healthy throughout the week. It's, it's, all, it's all measurable and it's all very specific. Uh, and then we want to look at, um, so the A and the R kind of join a little bit together. So you want to make sure it's achievable, but you want to make sure it's also realistic. Okay, so if you've got a very busy week ahead with work and you're traveling, um, 
knowing full well you're not being able to exercise your five, six times a week or you know your meal prep's not gonna be great, it's not really achievable or, or realistic for you. All right, um, and also in regards to realist, uh, and when it comes to being realistic is you don't wanna say I'm gonna lose 10 kilos in a week. Okay, it's gotta actually be realistic and, and healthy and sustainable for you. Okay, which then brings us to the T, um, which is obviously we'll put a time frame on it. Okay, um, time wise, we like to stay small, so a week or two. All right, don't try and plan too far ahead, because again, you end up getting through it, and then if you lose interest, say you've got a four week goal, you lose interest at two, then the last couple weeks is, is, is not very beneficial towards you. So if you can give yourself little gold stars, little ticks or little, little boosts as you go, um, makes that end goal a lot more achievable and you know what you're doing is actually working. So that's the first part um, of this little mini series in regards to weight loss. Uh, next up is gonna be a bit more about the actual exercises and the exercise selection, so knowing where, to, where you can start and what's, what's beneficial and, and the negative effects that each sort of exercise can have.